In this video, we will learn about the diagnostic methods of diabetes and about the safe range of glucose. Myself, Rekha Agarwal, the Diabetes Reversal and Lifestyle Consultant. First of all, we should know what are the symptoms of diabetes. Yes, the symptoms of diabetes include increased urination, increased thirst, unexplained weight loss or weight gain, depends upon the condition. Other symptoms include fatigue, blood vision, increased hunger and sores that do not heal. Now the question arises, how much blood sugar is diabetes? For the first time in the history, in 1979, National Diabetes Data Group and DD G suggested a figure of 200 mg per deciliter. That means if blood sugar will be greater than 200 mg per deciliter, then the person will call it as diabetes. This figure is further reduced to 126 in 1997 by American Diabetes Association and by WHO. It is further supported in 1999. So before 1979, nobody was knowing which sugar or how much sugar level is termed as diabetes. Down the line, in 2003, this figure was further reduced to 100 mg per deciliter as per American Diabetes Association. And in 2010, this is further revised as per American Diabetes Association. In 2010, guidelines the fasting blood sugar was 100 mg per deciliter and postprandial it was 140 mg per deciliter. Means you can easily observe through the figures that from time to time the figure of 200 mg per deciliter is reduced and now it is 100 mg per deciliter for fasting. Due to this more number of people came into the category of diabetes patients. It is quite similar to a condition. For example, in a school, the passing percentage that was 33%, one day management decided that only 80% scorer students will be promoted to the next class. Then assume what will be happen. Now, number of failures will be increased just because they have narrowed down the passing percentage range. Same thing is happening in our life. Most of the patients are just taking medicine to meet the figure of 100 mg per deciliter. Though they are not sick, they, have, they don't have symptoms, but as per the definition, they are diabetic. So what is important for diagnosis? That the checking, that checking the blood sugar level is just a number that one can see on glucometer. The symptoms are equally important, like patient may have any symptom like dry throat, frequent urination, tiredness, low energy level, weight loss or weight gain, etc. So diagnosis should never be only on the basis of number. So what we can learn from here that number is not significant so long as the symptom is attached to it. Now let's see different diagnostic tests for diabetes. There are a number of tests which are performed. Among them fasting blood glucose level is generally used by the clinician wherein a blood sample is taken after overnight fasting. And as per the reading, the sugar level 99 and below, that is less than 100 mg per deciliter is considered as normal. 100 to 125 mg per deciliter is considered as pre-diabetic. That means it shows impaired fasting glucose level. And above 126, it is called as diabetes. Further, the other test is done as postprandial blood sugar level test in which sugar reading is taken is generally taken after 2 hours of the breakfast or meal average blood sugar level reading is the average of morning and bedtime blood sugar level reading 
then the four test is glycated hemoglobin test it indicates the average blood sugar level for past two to three months so it is tested after three months and it measures the percentage of blood sugar attached to the hemoglobin so higher the blood sugar level more hemoglobin so you will have more sugar attached to it and the other is random blood sugar test a blood sample which is taken at a random time regardless of your last what you ate a random blood sugar level of 200 milligram per deciliter is considered as diabetes now the question is which blood sugar test or which reading is most reliable though blood sugar reading is not very much reliable at all if at all it is which among the following is most reliable whether it is fasting blood sugar post prandial blood sugar hba1c random blood sugar or average blood sugar let's take fasting blood sugar level reading it is the most unpredictable reading as when we get up in the morning we generally have to do number of morning routine activities then later we take up our breakfast so what our brain does it orders our liver to put some more glucose in the blood this is the reason why most people get high sugar reading in the morning it is called dawn's phenomena and as per the report of 2005 endocrine practice journal report about 55 percent of population demonstrate dawn's phenomena but unfortunately medical doctors take this reading which is not predictable, which is not reliable at all. So the most reliable sugar reading among the four is average blood sugar level. Average blood sugar level is you just take morning fasting blood sugar level. The morning blood fasting blood sugar level should be one or two hour, one or one and a half hour before you get up. Means if you're if you rise up at seven, then you should take the fasting blood sugar level at 5:30 a.m. and along with this take the sugar level in the bedtime when you sleep at night add them and divide by 2 then you will get the average blood sugar level reading this is the most appropriate reading and it should be less than 250 mg per deciliter and the details you can see in our different other video wherein we have shown how this number 250 has come as per the new diabetes guideline as per latest american college of physician 2018 guidelines means the new diabetes guidelines if a person is able to maintain an average blood sugar level less than or equal to 250 milligram per deciliter without the interference of medicine that the person is not diabetic patient and of course trying to control blood sugar level with medication or insulin may give you desirable blood sugar number but at the cost of making you more sick and increasing the chances of death your doctor may not tell you about this because since many decades they are preaching just opposite to it so what we recommend we recommend people to take food as medicine which has to maintain blood sugar level naturally based on dr t colin Campbell's plant-based food science. Dr. T. Colleen Campbell's is a nutritional researcher in USA. His PhD in nutrition and he's the author of 300 scientific research paper. He's a well-known personality. He treated uh, Mr. Bill Clinton also after the after his five surgeries. So I will suggest stay safe, stay healthy, and be updated about the diagnosis and about the safe sugar range. Thank you.